Well, welcome to Chapter 10. In this lesson, we are going to be talking about the areas of parallelograms and triangles. And we'll go ahead and start off this lesson with some familiar formulas to you. The first theorem is the area of a rectangle theorem. And you already know that the area of a rectangle is the product of its base and its height, where we label the base B and the height H. One of the properties or the relationship between the base and the height in a rectangle, um, not only are they just the sides of the rectangle, but there's an interesting uh, relationship between the height and the base where the height has to be perpendicular to the base because of the definition of a rectangle having 90 degree angles. So that's an important thing to, to notice because as we talk about the area of a parallelogram, it's very similar. So the area of a parallelogram is the product of the base and the corresponding height as well. However, we need to know that the height in a parallelogram is any, um, it's, it, it's actually called an altitude and it has to be perpendicular to the base. So in a parallelogram, we're not going to take the other side um, as the height like we do in a rectangle, but it must be the perpendicular distance to the base. So that's an important thing to talk about. So the base of a parallelogram can be any of the sides, but the altitude or the height is the segment that's perpendicular to the line that contains the base. So make sure that you understand the difference between a height and an altitude. All right, so let's go ahead and work some problems with finding areas of parallelogram. So we have two problems here, and we are to find the area of each parallelogram. So just using the parallelogram formula, area is base times height. Since we have an altitude height here of four inches, we're gonna call this side here the base. So area is going to be base times height, which is five times four, which is 20 square inches. Remember, whenever we're finding area, our units are square units. Here's another one, good time to pause the video if you like and try to figure this one out on your own. Hope you gave that a try. This one again, we're just going to apply the same property. This time our altitude or our height right here is 3.5 centimeters, which means we're gonna call the two centimeters the base. So we have two times 3.5, which gives us seven square centimeters. All right, this one's a little bit more complicated. Finding a missing dimension, it says for parallelogram ABCD, what is the length of DE to the nearest tenth? So we are looking for this altitude to the base AB. So that is our goal. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to find the area of the parallelogram where we can use CF as the height. Okay, if we're using CF, we're gonna use AD as the base. So go ahead and apply the area formula, which is the base times height. So remember our base is segment AD. Our height is CF, so we have 13 times nine, which is 117. So our area is 117 square inches of our parallelogram. So now we're going to work backwards. Now that we know the area, let's apply that area formula again. And this time let's use AB as our base, since we know the base AB, then we should be able to solve for the height DE. So here we go, the base is AB, height's going to be DE, we know the area is 117, and we also know that the base is 9.4 inches, so now we just need to solve for DE. You can use the variable X if you want there, if it makes more sense to you. So then dividing both sides by 9.4, we end up with the length of side DE, or altitude DE, is 12.4 units, which in this case are inches. All right, so down here we have another problem for you to try. Pause the video, try this one on your own. All right, hope you gave that a try. This one says a parallelogram has sides 15 and 18. The height corresponding to the 15 centimeter base is nine centimeters. What's the height of the corresponding 18 centimeter base? So that's just a case where we're going to apply our area formula, area equals base times height. And so we have 15 and 18, whoops, excuse me, 15 centimeter and nine centimeters. And that's going to give us a total of, let's see, 90 and 45 is 135 centimeters squared. And so now we're gonna use that formula uh, for the area is equal to the base times the height. We're looking for the height that corresponds to the 18 centimeter base. 
So we have the base of 18, we're looking for the height, and then solving that for h, we're going to divide both sides by 18. And let me just punch that in on my calculator real quickly. And we end up with 7.5 centimeters. All right, so it says, on this slide we're going to start talking about the areas of triangles. And it says, you can remember the formula for the area of a triangle by associating it with the formula for the area of a parallel parallelogram. Picture rotating a triangle about a midpoint of a side to form a parallelogram. Basically that's saying you can put any two sides or the same side um, against any triangle. Reflected about a side is another way of saying that. And it'll form a parallelogram. So then we know the area of the parallelogram is base times height. So the if we have two triangles in our parallelogram, it should make sense to you that the area of the triangle is just half the product of the base and the height. Since we can form any two triangles, we'll form, we'll form a parallelogram. So the thing to notice here, again, our height is always perpendicular to the base. The base can be any of the sides as long as you have the height is the one that is perpendicular to the base that you are using. So the height is the length of the altitude. So let's use that formula to find the area of the triangle in this sail. It says you want to make a triangular sail like the one shown in the picture. How many square feet of material do you need? Well, first of all, we have a mixture of units here. We have feet and inches, so we want to convert everything just to inches. So multiply your feet times 12 and then add the inches you have. So this altitude here is 146 inches. Our base is 160 inches. So our second step then is to go ahead and to find the area of the triangle. So the area of the triangle is the one half the base times the height. Our base is 160, our height is 146, giving us 11,680 square inches. But now we're going to convert the square inches to square feet. We do that by dividing by 12. Just like we multiplied by 12 for each inch, we're going to divide by 12 for each inch. And since we have square units, we need to do this twice. So it's 11,680 divided by what amounts to be 144 when you multiply 12, and you get 81 and 1 ninth square feet. Now I don't care whether you use that as a fraction or a, or a decimal, either is fine with me. So here's a chance for you to try one. What's the area of this triangle? Go ahead and pause the video. I'm not going to give you the answer to this one, but the answer will, will come up in your quiz. So I'm going to move on to problem four, finding the area of an irregular figure. What's the area of the figure at the right? Well, basically, when you have an irregular figure, you're just going to divide it up into figures that you know the formulas for their areas. So this one, we have a square and a triangle. So first of all, we'll, try, we'll find the area of the triangle, which is 1 half the base times the height. You can see the work here. So since all of the sides of the square are 6, 6 is the base of the, of the triangle. Its altitude is 8, so an area of 24. For a square, it's just the base times height, which is the side squared, which is 36 square inches, and then the area of the entire figure is just the sum of those. So pretty straightforward. Here is your lesson check. Uh, please go ahead and work problems 1 through 5 and enter your answers. See you next time.